Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Welcome to the very first Because Science vlog where I'm going to take your comments and your questions and corrections and weird comments from each episode each week and reflect on it so we can grow this little community that we are building. And I can also bombard you with random facts and things that haunt me when I, when I sleep at night. Hey, look, we're vlogging. See? Uh, jump cut, jump cut, cut, jump, jump, cut, jump. Don't worry, I won't be doing that too much because I know how to string two sentences together. I'm looking at you, YouTube. <laughs> so last week it was Xenomorphs versus Darth Vader. I was looking at the science of the showdown. What would happen if taking all the science-y aspects into consideration like biology and physics and chemistry, what would happen if Darth Vader had to fight a Xenomorph? I said that it wouldn't be nearly as easy for Vader as everyone on the internet seems to think because lightsabers putting out so much heat in such a small amount of space don't or wouldn't cauterize wounds, even though they do that in the movie, but we'll get to that. So I knew this was gonna be controversial. What did you have to say about it? I should note that I'm pulling all of these comments from the Because Science YouTube channel, the new one, go subscribe, because then I will see what you're saying. Otherwise, it'll be dead to me, physically and mentally. Hey, our first comment is from Evil Otto, and he says, uh, you say dead skin bandage, end quote. I say strip steak, medium, medium well. Are you... I mean, I know your name says evil, but does that mean you're a cannibal? You, sh you probably shouldn't be eating human meat. Although the brain is probably the most nutritious part of a human that you... Cannibal facts. Hashtag cannibal facts. Even though the, the human brain is probably the most nutrition, nutritious part of the human that you can eat, you shouldn't because it also might have prions, which are little clusters of proteins that sit in people with prion diseases brains that are uncurable and then it would go into your brain and make holes and give you spongiform encephalopathy. Encephal... It would make your brain look like cheese. And you don't want that. Matterbeam says, thank you Matterbeam, if you don't know that he, uh, he helps with a lot of the episodes here on Because Science, because he is a super nerd, but a mysterious one. Matterbeam. He says, uh, when acid eats through metal, more science. Vader's suit, it releases hydrogen gas. And when that hydrogen gas passes near the lightsaber, because the lightsaber is so hot, it will heat up and explode when it reacts with the oxygen in the air. So we'll have a burning blood acid mist instead. Good point, MB. Not only is the lightsaber arguably the worst weapon to engage a xenomorph with, it has so many other properties just because of how much power it has. If it needs to melt through blast doors like butter, then it needs to have so much power behind it that it has a lot of unintended consequences, like setting everyone in the room on fire. That would kill me if I turned that on right now. Luckily, it's out of batteries. Ronan H says, have you named your lightsaber? That one. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. But you know what I could call it? Ray because that lightsaber has actually been used by Ray Park, Darth Maul, do it, twice on stage so far. It has been graced by the best thing about the prequels. So we can call it Ray Park, er, Jr. No, that doesn't fit. Yeah, see the guy who sings the Ghostbuster thing? He's not the same guy as Darth Maul. I know. You can't use that, nope. But it not legally binding. Hey, got there. Okay, a lot of good comments, but I think for this week, I gotta give shout out again. Best comment probably goes to Matterbeam for the first episode. You get a shout out, buddy, because you've been helping me and you are a super nerd. And I hope we continue to do more of that. But if you wanna be a top comment for this week, keep commenting, makes sense. Now, I'm not always right. I'm not an expert in anything. I'm not even a scientist. It's true. Although I did work in a lab once and I, uh, I punctured one of my gloves with stuff that had bacteria on the syringe. Two pairs of gloves. That was, a, that was a scary day. I'm just a nerd with a science education and a laptop. So I don't always get everything right, although I try to. What did I get wrong this week? According to you, nerds. Okay, I've been seeing this correction a lot. Nicola Tototo 
says, can he, Darth Vader, not hold the acid exploding stuff away from himself with the force? Uh, sure. If you want to, see, this is the problem. When you are analyzing franchises like these, you have to decide how much benefit of the doubt you are going to give their respective universes. Uh, some people have been saying that Anakin does stuff with gas in the Force in the Clone Wars, uh, but what I was going with is just what we see in the main canon of each franchise. In none of the movies do we see Darth Vader interacting with stuff smaller than uh, industrial siding in Cloud City with the Force and lightsabers. So to say that he also can manipulate gas, I, I think is pushing it. Physically speaking, sure, with the, f whatever the, f I don't even know what the Force is. Even if he could manipulate the gas that comes out, I don't think he would have time to. If you are close enough to strike something with a lightsaber, you are what? A few feet away, maybe a meter? If you punctured something with a lightsaber, the gas that comes out would be moving at Mach 1, 343 meters per second. Darth Vader would have to be moving away from it or reacting faster than the speed of sound to interact with the gas. And again, I think that's giving a little too much benefit of the doubt, even though he is a cool space wizard. Okay, Love Hawks has a good, good one here. Uh, Devil's Advocate, but we don't know what polymers make up Darth Vader's armor. And he goes on to say, even if it was a super acid like fluoroantimonic acid, Darth Vader's armor might be resistant to that kind of stuff like Teflon is, as I said in my episode about Xenomorph's blood. Okay, fair enough. But again, we are pitting two universes together that have never experienced each other, right? What are the chances that Darth Vader will just happen to have a suit that is resistant to an enemy that he has never encountered before? And not only that, he still has to breathe, right? If the air around this encounter was filled with a burning blood mist of acid, he's gonna <gasps> some of that in, which is gonna go into his lungs and be worse than what I suggested. And finally, BNA Talks has a good one, good correction that I've seen a lot of people making, which is essentially, what if a force user could regulate the power output or the heat of their lightsaber? Then, wouldn't it get down to some of the power levels that I was mentioning, like 10 watts to cauterize a wound with a doctor's surgical tool? Again, sure, but then is it really a lightsaber anymore? Nowhere in the main movies do we see Jedi or Sith adjusting the power levels of their lightsabers. We, what we see is what we get, right? These are hyper hot, hyper dangerous objects that can vaporize any material they are moving through almost instantaneously. In theory, if you could bring them down to the power output of a surgical tool, yes, they would operate more like surgical tools, but they don't. They are so hot that standing next to them as close as I am perspective-wise to your screen, it would feel like standing on the sun. You might as well be walking on the sun. And finally, uh, Barry Ogar says, does an acid retain its high, it is, does an acid retain it is highly acidic properties after being evaporated? If a xenomorph's exoskeleton is tough enough, a lightsaber might be able to pass through it so slowly that it would cauterize a wound. I know it's a stretch, but who says it evaporates the acid at the same temperature that, that water does? I do. You know why? Because we have no reason to think otherwise. That's what we have to look at when we are trying to be scientific about these kind of things. What do we observe? Everything that I think the corrections are saying this week have to do with what ifs. And in fictional universes, you can make a what if out of anything and get the right conclusion. But what do we observe? We observe acids, the super acid melting through a variety of metals, even very uh, structurally resilient metals like spaceship hulls. We see lightsabers vaporizing through everything super quickly, and we see the acid that moves like a fluid like water. It even evaporates a little bit, check the clip, when they first cut into the face hugger that's holding on to that dude. Kane. Yeah, Kane. So given what we observe, 
what would really happen? That's what I think my, my point was. Who said the first time was gonna be the best time? Uh, but given all your comments, and there were a lot of them, I still think I'm gonna stand by my conclusion. Even though Vader could use the Force and crush eggs and throw Xenomorphs out of airlocks, I still think eventually he would want to use a lightsaber on at least one of them. And when that happens, I think he would be close enough and the lightsaber would be hot enough that it would explode these beasts and get acid all over him, which would interfere with his suit in some way. What I was really trying to get at is that lightsabers do not cauterize wounds like you'd expect as we see in the movies, if you apply real world thermodynamics to them, which is our want to do on this show. Now, if you're already subscribed to Alpha, projectalpha.com, then you already know what the next episode of this show is gonna be about, cause you've already seen it. But for everyone else who hasn't subscribed yet, next episode, we are going Super Saiyan. I grew up with Dragon Ball Z, so I wanted to try to figure out if there was a way to explain what we observe. It's kind of like a theme, what we observe when a hero like Goku goes Super Saiyan. His hair changes color, stands on end, electricity forms around him randomly, an aura forms and he can form plasma balls and, and fly. Is there some theory that we can come up with that will explain everything that we see? I think we get pretty close, but that is for the next episode. Jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, jump cut, cut, jump cut, vlogging, ding, ding, cut, jump cut. So go and watch the last episode if you haven't yet and tell me what you think. For the next episode and the next vlog, I will be pulling comments from those comment sections, all your corrections and everything I missed and all the weird things you want to say about eating human meat. I will go there and check it out for facebook.com slash because science, youtube.com slash because science and at because science on all social media platforms. And don't forget, if you spin in the opposite direction that the earth is spinning, you'll slow it down just a bit, just a little bit more time to spend with whoever. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Your day is slower. You're welcome. If you like this video, like and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, do that. And if you're on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you can get notes from me about when I'm going to be at your face. And let us know what you think about this video because we're trying out a new format and I want to know what you want to know from me. Thanks for watching.